And welcome back to the desk, everybody. Ravish and Ravish joined by Tim and Smacks here yet again. Smacks, I gotta say it real quick, man. You get more handsome between games or is it just me at this point? I I, it's, I don't know if I'm just seeing it, but you know what? I'll keep that to myself. That's, that's across the board. But I'm Tim, a little late for that. <laughs> just maybe a little bit. Thank you, thank you. But Tim, coming to you first here, my brother. You know, we were talking a lot about how EG can improve going into this game, and we're talking about how EG was playing slow. Well, you know, this time they played a bit more faster, but on the other end, TSM um, just, I, I want to say, like, also trying to match the pace, but maybe they've gone a bit too far and need to find the emergency break. Yeah, I, I think you can talk a lot about, uh, like, like tempo in this game, right? In terms of, you can talk about pace or, like, the speed you play the game in different ways. And I think tempo in this game is, 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 a, is a, it, it's a really good example of what tempo actually means. Because when you look at the mid lane especially, and the lead JoJo was able to get, uh, and, and something that I really liked uh, to call out about this game was JoJo was able to get his first reset, you know, mm -hmm. 10 seconds or so earlier than Sword. And that led to a play where Shario and Mystique went on bot lane. Jojo and Sword both TP, but Jojo was TPing from the base where he had just healed up and bought some items. And mm -hmm. they were just able to win that exchange in just some small ways. And it led to a lot of really minor knock-on effects that I think snowballed through the rest of the game in, in certain ways. Uh, mid lane control, the ability to get the bottom scuttle crab that you know allowed contracts to kind of salvage uh, the jungle pathing that had really set his Mundo behind. And it, and it led to a lot of other things that, you know, EG by the middle of this game were way ahead in a lot of different ways and obviously contracts got so fed tsm couldn't kill him all of these things happened but it really started with jojo being able to get out of the middle lane early get that first reset off uh play with a lot more pace and then tsm you know tried to salvage that game in different ways they tried to play into the side lanes and make these dives and force fights but they from then on out they were on the back foot uh in not necessarily just in you know champion power but in tempo on the map yeah. in their ability to get to the plays at the right times and on the right footing and and ega punished that with with just standard kind of tempo play pressure into the into the jungle cross mapping all of the things that coaches love to see so i uh, <laughs> i think that that was really the story of the game in a lot of ways yeah it's it's the little things that transform into these huge huge advantages the butterfly effect sort of deal here for evil geniuses because like you mentioned on that bot side play you know it let contracts get that scuttle crab back so he shut down a little bit of babip's tempo sure you kept his flash there so it was a lot harder to dive in that bottom lane too so all of these things really start to culminate into one big advantage and it plays into exactly what evil geniuses wanted to do from the get-go because their adaptations did not just start in that play they started in the draft where they really started to attack these champions that are cornerstones of what tsm's comp was in game one they got rid of the hecarim they got rid of the nar and with that hecarim one especially it keyed tsm in hey we should probably ban udir because these are the two best junglers on the patch but problem with that is that contracts has an immensely deep pool you can't just expect that those two junglers being removed is going to be enough to shut contracts down and it's exactly what we saw he absolutely popped off on this mundo hmm. Tim, you were talking about it before, like you were seeing how deep can contracts jungle go. And although, well, that being his picks, but although we didn't necessarily see the cane we were possibly predicting, you know, of course, the of course, just the Udi and Hecker were taken out of the way. The Mundo was definitely a pick that, although so so fun, like I for us, it definitely came out of left field, right? Now, Smacks, you also mentioned before how they saved the jungle pick for a much later on to to kind of just to uh to, to kind of just OTSM off kilter, which has made it that much more fun. And really and truly, we see it now that Mundo does what he wants in the game. What was going to be the knife that cut through EGA? Like, and absolutely nothing, because Mundo was holding the cleaver. That slides down TSM at this point. And with them being 1 1, going with, going into the best of five series, Smacks, I'll come to you with this. We're talking about TSM being able to continue the tempo with now, but with them now not so much focused on the team fighting. What do you think they can adapt on going into the next game? Well, if they want to continue this dive threat, then they need to have champions that are accessible to Babip and accessible to Hanser that are not Hecarim and Nar, because those champions can very easily be banned away, and then they might just be left with nothing. If those are the champions that they want that we showed in game two, then. Mm -hmm. 
it's not really a dive composition anymore. They took a really big pivot with this Urgot as their final pick, and the Syndra as well. These champions do not service what Kaisa tends to want to do, where she just goes headfirst into that back line. Uh, Syndra is really strong when you have another immobile marksman that you can scatter the weak, the enemies away from. So it's, it's not really uh, servicing what TSM showed us as their main strength in game one. If they want to go for a different style, cool. I would love to see if they can give us that variety, but I really liked what they did in game one and it really did work for them. So I do kind of want to see what they can do with another full five champion dive composition if they've got that left in the tank. Yeah, and I think to jump in on that, I think the way TSM's comp works together as five is one thing in team fights, right? And and they've showed the most success, I think, with like Wombo engages and so on. And uh, <clears throat> but the other part of it is the way their comp functions in their early game playmaking. And Sword has been very ready, maybe a little too ready, to leave his lane and join like big four man dive plays. But it worked in game one. It did not work at all in game two. And, I, you know, even though a Syndra, I think, should be able to get some lane prio and be able to set up that, that ability to move, uh, he was giving up massive CS losses in the mid lane because of that movement. And, and that kind of inefficiency is something that I think TSM needs to clean up. Or if they're going to commit to that, then he's got to be on a champion like Galio to a certain extent that can afford that a little more easily. That is less about having to have enough damage to actually blow up a target when you go at them. So I, I think they're going to have to be careful what they do with Swords Pool on that as well. Definitely have to be able to decide whether the, whether how they want support, uh, how they want Sword to be able to contribute to the team. Right? Do they want him to be playing for the lane, or do they want him to be playing for the game? Right, which is why, like you mentioned, Tim, the Galio pick made sense because he was able to be at many of these uh, many of these fights in absolute heartbeat with both TP and the hero's entrance. So I'm thinking this, right? Look understandably, if you want to just devolve Sword down to be a team fighting menace, pit him on a Pantheon. Like, like, I know he's fallen out of favor just as of late, but I think he can still offer the same sort of dive threat. He's still quite strong in general. Lethality is a fun time, and like, especially <laughs> considering what, <laughs> what, what, what EJ might bring out. All right, Tim, you're you're We got you're Mad Magical here or something? Like, should he build an <laughs> Omewrecker? <or> like... <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, man, I know you're not about to just completely deny everything about to bring out, right? You were smiling and stroking your chin here. <laughs> all right, okay, all right, Tim, why no, Panthea? Give me like 10 seconds, why not? Why not? Uh, I mean, do <laughs> I have to go specific? No. <laughs> you know what? Fine, I understand. It's <laughs> I'll keep my opinions to myself. It's you know, but I, I oh. as always, can hope. As always, as I believe smacks we're about to get. If it and... <laughs> yeah, imagine how smart get... you're about to look when they pick it. <laughs> if they do, Tim, I promise you, I will claim it till the heavens. Absolutely, but. Smacks, like I was saying, I believe they're almost about ready for a draft as well. So we're going to throw it back to you and Desterix in the caster's booth to take us away from that one. Uh... <laughs> Thank you very much, Ravish, and welcome back, Smacks. Are you ready for game number three of TSM Academy versus Evil Geniuses Academy? Absolutely, I am. And I'm mm -hmm. really excited, especially to see Evil Geniuses Academy on red side, because... This is a team that has had a lot of very unique strength in the draft when they are on that side of the map, as opposed to a lot of other teams who really just look way better on blue. Evil Geniuses Academy have a lot of strength in the counter picks that they give to both Tony Top and Contracts, that latter of which we definitely saw come to fruition in the second game there on Dr. Mundo. All right, so Bant's coming in, already going after those meta junglers. Udir and Hecarim will be taken off the map, targeting contracts specifically, the Nidalee ban as well as Lilia, and one more ban to come out of TSM Academy. That's going to be Silas. We're still waiting for the final ban of Evil Geniuses Academy. The Silas one is rather interesting to me. It tells us that TSM Academy might be looking to first pick one of their supports. You know, does EG ban away Rel? Uh, and give over that Alistar, so uh, you have that one for your son, or they do the ban away Alistar. They picked the Rel, so TSM Academy now have that option to go for Alistar, but instead they lock in the Nar again for Hauntzer. This is, again, his Pentakill champion. 
Yeah, it's fully bought into it. Uh, NAR's been looking great yep. when it comes to North America. Uh, some people would throw some shade here or there if we talked about it in other regions, though. <laughs> As waiting for the return picks to come out of EG, there's definitely a lot of uh, good stuff still on the table. Um, Tristana is one of the ones that does pop out to me. Alistair, of course, is the one that is the Urasan special that EG will just not let him have. Absolutely. I was really expecting that TSM would have a higher priority on this champion because Evil Geniuses can deny it away, and it did feel like they were gearing toward that with a Silas, but now Evil Geniuses Academy say, hey, why don't we just take that champion? Mystique's had a phenomenal game on that one last time, and they denied the Silas away from themselves. Now they can't steal away the Alistar ultimate. So Evil Genesis Academy do exactly that, and they snag up this Renekton alongside it. Okay, I know I'm getting some hate for it, but Mystique West, man, that, it's his name. It's the way he's pronounced <laughs> it on the Gamepedia. Uh, I don't know if you guys actually check the Gamepedias, but like someone pronounced it Mystique's, and he actually went onto the page to make sure it was said correctly. <laughs> so I'm putting my all into just pronouncing his name right, because that's the respect I have for him. And yeah, he, he's doing good stuff. You got to give the players some respect. More picks to come in. Kaisa getting locked in this time. Nothing too, too strange for TSM. This is pretty much a Cody Sun champ, and... If uh, the trend runs the same way, we should see Zaya on the other side for EGA. I would imagine so. It's been the, the mirror matchup of the bot laners so far in this series. Cody Sun, three games for three, has been on the Kai'Sa. Will Shoryu make the same handshake deal yet again and have that favorable bot laner here for him in the Zaya? We're about to find out, I'd imagine. Does TSM Academy actually lock in mm. the Olaf in the jungle, uh, which is a very aggressive early game jungler, but... We got, as aggressive as Talia. we got it. We got it. Contracts is on the Talia. We said it earlier. It was used in the tournament um, in their matchup against C9, and it did well. 3.8 KDA, Contracts, Talia champion. It works with him. Oh, man. I love Contracts on this champion so, so much. Talia jungle <laughs> is one of my all time favorites. Talia in general, truthfully. Uh, Full disclosure, I did purchase the crown Talia skin with the signature on it on the border and everything because I love that champion so, so much. And let me tell you, this champion is so strong with all these stun click champions that are on the side of Evil Genius Academy. We got Alistar, we got Renekton. If you are stunned for just a second, you'll be flicked into the opposing team and knocked up and hit with so many stones you can't even count them. And look at this, the ban of the Galio. Lots of respect going over to TSM. They're not going to let him have that type of combo. As well as the ban of the Lucian, which is directed directly at Jojo Pion, of course. Um, we talked about the off-meta champions he likes to pick, the more aggressive champions. TF getting bound away as well. Um, there's still quite a lot left on the table. If we look at Jojo Pion's just champion peel as a, a champion peel. Oh my god, I'm just slurring it over. <laughs> it. As a whole, uh, for this tournament, it was set Lucian, Renekton, and Silas. So that tells you a lot about the type of player that Jojo actually is. And he might have the same capability to lock in set as well as the last pick, but Evil Genius Academy take the opportunity to take Zaya yet again for sure. You, it was not banned away by TSM Academy. They really attempted to attack the pool of Jojo Pyun. We'll see if it worked. Uh, as it didn't work for contracts in game two, but still got a lot of options here. It will be against the Zoe of Sword, who. Did have some really nice team fights just yesterday against FlyQuest Academy on this champion, but similar to a lot of the games that Sword has shown us, he did actually fall very behind in CS on this champion in the lane. So hopefully he gets to shore up that weakness and hopefully he can show us that that is not a constant problem for him. So the final lock-in comes in, the Leona on Yurisan, and I like it. I like it a lot. Um... Yurisan loves the engagement, that's why he's been picking the Alistair Rel so much. Leona still allows him to do that, just it's a little bit more binary. You don't get as much utility, it's just all about the engage, all about the go button. But Cody Sun complements that so well, and so does the rest of TSM's comp. One more pick to come out of Evil Geniuses Academy. They will get the counter pick, and they're opting to go in with the Jace this time. That Jace is going to be sent top lane. It is the Renekton mid for Jojo Pyun. <laughs> so all of those bands that TSM Academy just threw his way, completely useless. The Renekton was already there. So really nice adaptation here for Evil Geniuses Academy. This is one of the reasons why I get so excited about them on red side. They have so much flexibility and such deep champion pools where they can pull off plays like this. And 
This is exactly the kind of game where contracts can show us that he is a contender for best jungler in this tournament, as he has shown in the past, mainly on the Nidalee. That's not going to get see the light of day in this series. Ah, but Bip's been challenging him, though. I will say that. But Bip has been a pretty phenomenal jungler. People kind of undersell the Bip when it comes to Academy. Like, you only focus on Haunter and Cody's son because they're the world's visitors, right? But Bip's been the world's, man. The last two years he's been there. Uh, Oceania uh, 2019 was Mammoth, 2020 was Legacy. He's an experienced player, and it does show with his champion pool. It does show with how well he works with DSM. But now, this is the true challenge right here. You're you're dealing with uh, a legacy player in contracts who's playing one of his more efficient champions in Talia. That's one of his signatures here. I think you can go ahead and say it. He owns the rights to Talia jungle in the Proving Ground <laughs> Spring 2021, as he has shown huge successes on this champion overall across the tournament. But yeah, like you're saying here for Babip, he is on this really major point of early aggression for TSM Academy. Mm. And that's what we saw from him on the Hecarim as well. Not quite as early as something like an Olaf can take off with, but he was still the player who was making a lot of the calls and finding a lot of the picks. So if Babip can do the same thing in this game, he might be able to shut down contracts on that signature champ of his. And I do love seeing the Olaf when it's played. Uh, one thing more than other, it's just very good at neutral objective control. Like, once you get into those fights, once you get the low health, uh, you can solo neutral objectives no problem because of the passive as well as the regen you get from his W. But, you know, once the fights start up, Olaf is one of those champions where you're like, I'm getting him lower, I'm getting him lower, I'm going to kill him, and he just keeps regening more and attacking faster. He can do more damage the lower he gets. So it should be interesting if we do see that, like, kind of meeting between the two junglers. Uh, you still have, like, the benefit for contracts ultimately just because Seismic Shove. You do got to dodge that, and it's easier to dodge the axes if these two junglers do meet, but... Contract's going for an invade. Going straight after Hanser. Rock's not going to land for now, but the invade will be done, and will be by surprise catching off TSM. See the on my way ping from Babip over there on the blue buff. The enemy blue buff, that is. Looks like he's going to attempt this vertical jungle path, but... Truth be told, I feel like Contracts gets the better end of this deal. He starts up on the enemy camp. He gets to go straight for his early game AD laners. And exactly this could happen here too. Jojo might be able to just put a stop to the shenanigans of a bit. Or he gets to watch him use the blast cone over the wall and continue vertical jungle. That's the problem. He wants to follow. He wants to stop a bit. It would be a very viable kill. It's just you got to leave your lane. You got to leave CS. You start losing yeah. experience. You can't really challenge it, so vertical, vertical jungling is going to be the way for TSM. And same thing going off for EGA, as Tony Top over in the top lane going straight after Hauntzer knocks him down to just over 100 L. Looking really nice in this lane matchup right now. Does miss out on that Shock Blast at the end, but still a ton of extra pressure up here and be able to go to that hammer form and regenerate some mana here with his auto attacks on the wave. Pushing against Ponser here. So, uh, oh, Jojo doesn't have another dash. <laughs> Jojo goes very aggressive on the sword. Knocks him to just sub 200 health, but, you know, you just need that Fury Bar to be maxed out, and you get a lot of damage when it comes to that W over Nectin, when you get that stun on. It can do so much havoc, and sword will be experiencing that more and more as this game does go on. Definitely will, sword. Shown some... Big strength on the Zoe in team fights before, but this game is going to really have to make it work as Hauntzer is about to hit Mega. Right, here we go, Contracts. With the Seismic Shove lands it beautifully, but the stun is also beautiful from Hauntzer. He will get enough of a health pool to be able to stay alive and stop that top lane die from going the way of EG. Very nicely timed Mega transformation for Hauntzer. Keeps him alive, but will be at the cost of a lot of these minions and his teleport up to this top lane too. He's already missed out on a few of the ranged ones, and you can see that the CS is still in the single digits up there as we're about to hit four minutes yeah. into this game. Tony, on the Jace, has looked really nice in this lane. This is rare for us. Usually it's Hauntzer doing very well on this top side, but if yeah. we did watch earlier in the season, he can be a little bit feast or famine if someone just outright lanes better than him. Now Sword getting chased down by Jojo. Jojo on the Renekton, man. He's a very hungry croc straight out of Florida. 
only he was actually <laughs> from Florida, but Bip will take that Scuttle Crab and Contracts is preying on this mid lane. JoJo goes forward. There oh. is the stun. Contracts tries to find more, but Seismic Shove is not going to come out in time. Sword actually cleansed a little bit late right there, but he does still survive that play with the use of his flash. A little bit of a mechanical misplay on the Zoe in this lane, and might get picked off again. Oh, here we go, JoJo with the flash oh. forward first, blood. JoJo Pyun looks so good when he's on these bullies in the mid lane, oh. and that is why. But meanwhile, in the bot lane, your son will pick up Mystique as all the meanwhile it is looking good for this fight because one for one each we got something competitive smacks we absolutely do all of the summoner spells used in that bottom lane to kill mystiques right there and keep the cs lead in the hands of cody sun but we get to look at the mid lane yet again sword overreaches just way too far jojo still has his flash available and contracts doesn't even take part in that kill he doesn't even get an assist for it meanwhile there's all those summoner spells on the Mystiques. <laughs> Having beef tonight. Yeah, all that getting picked up. But ultimately, it's going to result in the Drake going the way of TSM. But Bip will be able to get that one. As we said, low health means he can trade Drake faster. So no problem there for TSM getting the first Drake of the game. This top side, we're seeing Sword is trying to help out Hanser with the, with the wave, making sure he doesn't get dove. But again... This is one of those situations where Sword... Oh! Uh... <laughs> oh no! You try to use that passive a little bit too much there, buddy! Hmm... Theoretically, the highest Back to sword. DPS <laughs> would be at 1% health. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the Krugs uh, pack a little bit of a punch, it seems. And will take down Babip. Uh, no kill going over to Evil Geniuses, though, so that's at least nice, um, but I don't think that's what he was intending when he started attacking that crud camp. And here we go with the attack over on the top side. Jojo once again coming out for a room, looking for a Haunter. Haunter does have flash, so he could get over the wall. That's why Jojo's waiting on the wings, trying to catch the escape route. Tony now getting lower, but Jojo will get that dash still waiting for the stun it will be found and so will the kill another one going over to jojo pion no chance for hanser to flash an excellent use of the golf swing there from tony top to manipulate his positioning up there and hanser's not quite level six either but Ooh, here goes the force engage on to shoryu shoryu takes a lot of damage but sweet quest is there to provide the backup needed tsm now setting uh -oh. up for this tower dive, the Bip leading the fray. So much damage so quickly. Sword will grab that kill. And Shoryu just forced to walk away. Paddle Star comes out. It Ooh. will be sidestep. Shoryu stays alive, but another axe goes through. Shoryu gets under his tower in time. Won't keep up the play in knowing the Shoryu still has his flash available, but the damage is already done. They've killed Mystiques a second time. And look at the CS lead for Cody Sun. It's 30 up in this lane, and he's getting a couple of turret platings down here too, proxing the wave. Shoryu has to just watch this entire wave fall. And even though Evil Geniuses have built this composition, have built this draft around the top side, around contracts finding kills, around Jojo Pune finding stuns, still do not want to be this far behind in that bottom lane. Shoryu still wants to have some sort of impact as the late game progresses. Yeah, Cody Sun's just not going to let that happen, and neither is Year Sun. Uh, they're a phenomenal bot lane, and they're showing why Cody thinks they're the best bot lane in Academy altogether. Yeah. It's working really well for them, too. But Bip uh, will signify to the enemy team that he, he, he did die to the Krugs, <laughs> but he's getting, he's getting revenge. There it is. Ah, he did Perfect. It. Way to go, champ. <laughs> Your son was there to help him if he needed it, too. I like that. It's teamwork right there. Ooh. A nice sleepy trouble bubble, but JoJo's quick on making sure he gets back into that minion wave so no paddle stars can follow up and chip away his health bar. That mid lane pushed in to help contracts with the Rift Herald here too. Is the first neutral objective of the game here for Evil Geniuses. They did miss out on the first dragon, which seems to be a trend here. But Bip's done a nice job getting the first dragon of the game and even their lost game of game two. But We'll miss out on this Rift Herald as there it goes. You still have to pick it up, Contracts. Uh, there he goes. This is a good leash, but all for naught. Still got to walk that way. 
You got it. You got it. That's what matters, Max. He's got it. He's got it. He's okay. also got these sorcerer shoes to try to deal some more burst damage. We're seeing Evil Genius's bot lane. They know. They, they know. They're well aware of what's coming up. TSM, seeing contracts and everyone around the Rift Herald was the call to make this play happen, but the response is too fast Ooh. out of EGA. They will be able to group up and save their bot lane and start an engage of their own as they go after Cody's son, but Solar Flare will make sure that engage does not continue. Genesis bot lane don't have their ultimates quite yet. Actually, Mystique's just hits level six on that wave. Sure, you still looking for it. You can see just how much he has been denied in this lane. Mystique's hits level six before even he does, and SCS lead is continuing to grow for Cody's son. It's about 40 in the lane right now, and honestly, the attention that TSM has been giving that lane has been relentless and ruthless. Sure, you has not been able to catch his breath, but. Evil Geniuses are still finding advantages across the map. They're going to take down the entire mid lane turret and just checking in with top lane too. Tony has been able to take four plates alone up there. Evil Geniuses are doing so well and they're continuing to press the advantage. Tony top, the plates are cleaned up. He's just waiting to wail away at this tower, but knowing that Meganar's there, he doesn't want to risk that. That being said, though, JoJo has no business staying in the mid lane. He wants to go up towards the top side and punish Hanser even more. And Hanser is well aware of that, knowing that that mid lane is gone. Nice response from Hanser. Will not be dove under his turret, but the turret is not going to be there anymore. So not even going to be considered a dive at this point. It would just be a gank. There goes the second turret within just 20 seconds for Evil Genius's Academy. Likely will miss out on this dragon though, thanks to their added attention up there in the top side of the map, but they're still so ahead in the gold right now. And it's gonna be up to Jojo, Tony and Contracts to extend their lead to sweeping advantages across the board because Shoryu's still hurt. Yeah, but Bip really wanted to start the Drake there, but the, just too many people missing on the map of Evil Genius's Academy. And now they're all showing up towards the Drake, towards this area. They want to be able to grab this Infernal. And Mystique West will be in the front line, clearing out that vision, priority going heavily over to EGA. Let's see what TSM have to do to respond with this. Jojo is in the bot side, and Yurisan tries to find the Solar, but Slice and Dice Supreme. Jojo able to just get out of that ultimate. I was rather surprised that he was able to withstand the snare too, so I can imagine how Yursan is feeling right there. The tenacity is really nice from Jojo Pune. You can sh tell that he has the legend tenacity rune as he's able to get out of that exchange and able to continue just farming it up down there as his team takes the second dragon of the game. Oh boy. Here we go, attention set towards the top side, but look at this, TSM will instantly uh -oh. see the rotation coming out of Evil Geniuses, or will they? They're the ones that were going to be caught out in it. Evil Geniuses starting to press forward, but here comes the rest of TSM. Ragnarok popped as Babip goes deeper oh. and deeper, going after Mr. Quest. He will not be able to take him down. His sword will be slain by Shoryu. Now Jojo jumps in and will take down Babip as well. TSM full retreat. Tony Top waiting in the wings. He'll be able to jump in for one more little pop shot. Can't get in range, but Evil Geniuses control the rift. Two clean picks there for Evil Geniuses alongside control over that top side of the map, which has been the name of the game this entire time, Deserux. I don't even know why TSM are trying to fight up here. The members of Evil Geniuses on this side of the map are just so strong. They teleport on over to this one too. Sword uses stasis just a little bit too late. Does get hit by that truckload of feather damage. And Jojo Pyun is able to clean up the rest of it here. Evil Geniuses Academy are doing exactly what I wanted them to. They are extending that lead to the rest of the members of their team. They're involving Shoryu in the fights on that top side. They're getting him his money, they're getting him his items, and now he has that Gale Force even before Cody Sun after they attacked him so much. Yeah, they're playing as a team. Every single member of Evil yeah. Geniuses has an assist. You can't say the same for TSM. They're not able to find the plays like Evil Geniuses Academy are. But that being said, they are trying to make the plays. That's why you see TSM up here right now, trying to set up a dive, but Evil Geniuses, they're the wise to do it. They notice the rotation and they're gonna call them out on it. So difficult to make any play around the map here against Evil Geniuses. This contracts has so much mobility and they're giving up positioning in the bottom lane too. We can see Jojo is able to crack down on this bot lane turret too. Just barely not getting all the platings, but 14 out of 15 is pretty dang good. It's a lot of money going in the pocket of Jojo. 
He's 301 oh, yeah. as well. Got that 350 bounty. He's already completed one item, working on another. Jojo is very strong, and he's a threat. One that Sword's gonna have to watch out for, one that Cody's son's gonna have to watch out for. Really everyone. This Renekton already has two items before just about anyone on TSM even has a single one. This guy has so much money. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is looking at him like, hmm, uh, I think I might be doing something wrong. I think JoJo is a little bit richer than I am right now. Yeah. That's this Renekton in the mid lane. You're about to see some croc with Gucci as he heads over towards the bot lane. Now looking up a bit. Camera changes angles, but there we go. Ragnarok gonna be Papa Bip trying to get away from the Gator, but he will oh. be slain. Jojo gets that kill over the wall, comes Mystic Quest. Mystic Quest will do his best to run defense here. He's going towards the teleport. Now offense. Sword is the one caught out. He will be shoved back. They said contracts and Tony Top will destroy him. Out comes the Weaver's Wall. Cody's son is caught deep into no man's land. Gets shoved backwards by contracts over the wall. We'll find the shard and we'll find the kill. Evil Geniuses, Nowhere seven too early. Nowhere is safe from Evil Geniuses as they just run around and your son. Son. I, I said nowhere is safe. This is this your is the son. least safe place you could be. Your son, not like this. Yep. <laughs> it, it was a very long route to walk. Uh, him going down like that does really, really bite, though, because that's an extended death timer. That's a little bit of time that EG have to just play with the map a little bit more. Uh, we're going to get a replay of just how much damage JoJo deals right now. You can see he's two levels up on Pippabip. He's so bulky here, too. Like, Babip is dealing a lot of damage, but there comes the Sterex. He has so much extra sustain with his Q there, too. The Fury is stacking like mad. Even after getting put to sleep, just a ton of burst from Tony <laughs> on the flank and contracts here, too. There's the wall. Cody gets taken down. And EG, I, what, I don't know what you can do at this point if you're TSM. I mean, your son knows. He's just going to run over uh, over here. I would walk 500 miles, <laughs> I would walk 500 more. Uh, too bad he can only get to about 499. Couldn't finish that <laughs> full 500. Not the full trek. Uh, my maybe question... if he had mobility boots or something. Yeah, you know, maybe, but he's still taking damage and <laughs> losing that, uh, that little bonus. That's true. <laughs> yeah, there's some good cardio, always does people well. Perfect indeed. You know what's perfect so far is how EG have been handling this game. Yeah. They've been doing a great job of controlling this map. They are showing some weaknesses. You do get Haunter over in the backside, able to grab a tower of his own. But that's only tower number one for TSM. EG have already grabbed two, and they're going after this Drake. It's a Mountain Soul too, so extra durability on these champions that are all very aggressive really wanting to dive in is going to be very valuable for them. Even though they're not really building a lot of resistances, it's not going to stack up nearly as much as it would on a champion like an Ornn or a Scion. Still getting a lot of value, especially if they do get that soul, which is so, so valuable for a mm -hmm. team like Evil Geniuses has comprised here, where they're all things early game. They're wanting to set the tempo of the game really early on. Soul just gives you all the scaling you could possibly want, too. So, seeing if they can really make that one stick in this game so now jojo headed over towards the top side we'll be clearing that out he does have teleport so he's gonna put a lot of pressure over there and pretty much beg tsm to respond it's gonna be a bit of a tug of war just back and forth and the idea eventually catch out tsm in rotation you're looking to make tsm make the mistake and capitalize on it geniuses are just pushing that line of scrimmage further and further and further giving tsm much less room to move around and find those plays that we've seen them make specifically in game one we're seeing just getting bullied out again Here we go again focusing on to your son he will get destroyed jojo pyun will grab that kill and evil geniuses they make it look easy there was no sense of urgency to actually get that kill they just got it walked away took the tower this riff really does feel like theirs, but Sleepy Trouble Bubble lands. It's only a little bit of damage on the contracts. That's all TSM can really do at this state. Before Evil Geniuses, they've set up the wave in the bottom lane at the same time. They have this Rift Herald. It's going to be yet another turret taken by them. And again, 
this line of scrimmage, it keeps getting pushed further and further into TSM's base. Eventually, they're just going to be completely choked wow. out of all resources. You're seeing, meanwhile, Jojo is taking all of the top side camps, <laughs> further extending the lead that Contracts has in this jungle. He's up so many camps. I believe that's about that's about like 10 camps in this game over for Bip. That's ridiculous. Yeah, this is one of the most disheartening things as a jungler because, like, those jungle camps are all you got. The lanes Ooh. need their stuff, too. Here comes the teleport. They're going to go after Jojo. Hanser leading the charge here, but Bip and Sword going to be there for backup as Jojo takes a lot of damage. Will be able to flash away from the Paddle Star. Out comes the Axe. Not going to land. Still more autos going through. Jojo goes in, gets a little bit of health with the Q. Mr. Quest able to show oh. up. Gets the Headbutt Pulverize combo onto Hanser. Stuns him. Not underneath the tower, though. Will not get too much else after that. Sleepy Trouble Bubble lands, and that will be it. TSM dedicates so much to try and find that engage. But... They will find nothing. Instead, it's EG finding the momentum on the map, in the mid lane, in the bot lane. Tony chunks that inhibitor turret down to half HP, even below it with the minion damage. And exactly like you said, Jojo doesn't even die. He survives throughout the entirety of that fight. He still has his ultimate, so he can be a menace in those fights to come. And again, evil geniuses are eating all the jungle camps. Tony Top takes away these Krugs, and Babip is still sitting at 100. This is the same number that he was at when I last checked a couple of minutes ago. He has not found anything other than a ward just now. And there's not much else to really be found on this map for TSM. It's an 8k lead in the pocket of EG. And 8k, sure it's big, but it's really freaking huge when it's 20 minutes into the game, Smacks. This yeah. has been very, very calculated. It feels like Evil Genius because Evil Geniuses could just start up the Baron and just win a fight and the Baron at the same time right now. That's the kind of lead that we're looking at at this time. And they have they've done it just with a really nice and creative use of this split map, right? It all started with contracts taking away that blue buff. Ooh, walling off now, trying used. to go for a fight. Walling off TSM, they go for the engage, but flashing into that tight nook there. TSM are going to be able to get away. Evil Geniuses Academy, they're only going for their poke damage, but they can't find too much. TSM should be able to walk away from this one. Priyarsan and Hanser are going to get caught out on the flank. Jojo is there, and Jojo is wailing away onto Ooh. your son. But Bip tries to show up to provide some emotional support, but he just gets a shock blast in the face. Evil Geniuses Academy, they're going to continue having their way with TSM. TSM does withstand the onslaught. They do survive. They do get some breath of fresh air, but losing all those resources... Low mana on their Zoe does potentially mean we're going to have to give up this dragon, which again is the scaling win condition here for Evil Geniuses if they can start to pick that up. Contracts taking the Scuttle Crab just to give them extra movement speed and vision around the dragon that's going to come. Sword has not recalled. He is still really, really oom as this fight continues. Can't poke out nearly as much as you would like a Zoe to be able to do. There's not as much vision for Evil Geniuses this time, so if they wanted to play, they could go for it. TSM are instead just going to take the front door. Going after Mr. Quest, who will go in with a headbutt pulverize. He gets punished right away because the Ragnarok is popped. Solar Flare goes out. It's going to be the support Ooh. going down first, and the Drake is still up. Shoryu still trying to get some damage in, and it gets wow. stolen away, but Bip will get the Smite War win. Shock Blast goes out. The return damage is still very threatening from Evil Geniuses. TSM, they're happy taking that win. They got the support. They got the Drake. They're going to take that and walk straight back into the lane. It's a rare misstep for Evil Geniuses. They're super far ahead. They have all these advantages on their side, but give up just a little bit too much. They don't have the same resources that we saw them use in that mid fight. And Speaking of the mid-fight, they didn't actually find any kills there either, so they lose out on their support, they lose out on the dragon, and they're finding themselves in a position where this advantage is meaning a little bit less than it would otherwise if they were on scaling champions, which means that this dragon being denied away is just such a big deal, because if this gold lead is becoming less and less meaningful and TSM are still finding ways to win fights regardless, then denying those dragons will deny the scaling. So it's definitely in the mind of Babip. 
as he was able to get that smite still. But Evil Geniuses, in their mind, is this game is not won just yet. We need to continue pressing that pressure. You can see they're trying to set up something over on the blue side jungle of TSM, but they're not going to find too much here. But Bip is the wiser to it. He's throwing those axes for vision. Shoryu just trying to keep this wave shoved in. But it almost feels like Evil Geniuses are running out of ideas on how to play this mid game. They're not finding their fights that they want. They're not getting the objectives they want. They're getting stolen at this point and even losing out on some of these fights. They're starting to slip, Smax. Do a slight standstill. Still need to... Oh, here, this this could be it. Oh, this could be it indeed. But Bip runs low, but he runs out nonetheless with the Ragnarok. So Evil Geniuses will not get the kill, but that is a jungler critically low. That is Baron being called by Evil Geniuses. Has to recall this could be the main objective that lets Evil Geniuses snowball their victory in this game. This could be the moment where they can win the game. Yo, Evil Geniuses, the Baron's getting lower and lower. Sleepy Trouble Bubble did go out. Get the slow, the sleep onto Tony Top. And with 1k health remaining, Baron will go oh. to Evil Geniuses. The Solar Flare goes out. It's on to Jojo. Jojo with a third of health remains. Mystic Crest has to immediately start backing off because Babip has his number. Seismic Shove goes out. Jojo oh. dives deep. He will be resurrected and be able to rejoin this fight as EGA are trying very carefully to win this, but they oh, no. are starting to fall to the poke, to the crowd control, to the fight of TSM as Cody's son grabs another onto contracts. Nonetheless, it is Baron going to EGA, but they lost so much in that last fight. I say oh no, because Contracts had his flash, but he thought that he could dodge the bubble from Sword. Not quite so lucky. Evil Geniuses do lose out in a couple of those kills, but they did get the Baron, as we see in this replay. But Bip is nowhere to be found. They had just chunked him out. He is arriving to this play late, and Sword, while he's able to chunk out the members really hard, does not get the Baron stolen away. Both supports fall, so we do get to see that one happening, but we also see the Babip gets thrown away from the team rather than into it. So Evil Geniuses, they can't find that kill either. And we're about to see this tragic. Oh, oh it breaks your heart, Smax. It definitely does. Contracts could have flashed it, but <laughs> did not think that he would get hit by it. Now roaming the jungle, looking for Babip. No wards to go out. EGA, they're still in a pretty good spot. This is still prime positioning for them. But TSM, they're finding their way back in this very slowly, very carefully. They don't have the gold where they would like it, but Cody Sun's been farming up. He's been a madman. He's been trying to do his part, and he's been doing it quite well. TSM do have a fighting chance. They have a, uh, they have a window here where it's going to be a little bit difficult for them to do it, though, because Hanser does not have his mega available. So even if he were to teleport to a play, it wouldn't be very effective. So Evil Geniuses can notify themselves of that and can start taking down these turrets and trade with what Hanser is doing. There's a wall. Ooh, Weaver's wall means no one can defend this tower. EG just have their way with it. It is another tower going down, but this time on the inhibitor. Going straight after the inhibitor, Yersan looking for the engage and so is Hanser, but he's only got half a bar left before he does go into that Meganar form. That's getting smaller and Cannons. smaller by the moment, so TSM might go for an engage here. They want to defend this inhibitor so badly. EGA, they don't want to be here for nothing. They see that slither of health, but the cannon creep will go down. TSMA, they are putting up a decent defense here. Now here comes another wave of minions with another cannon creep. But you're seeing the poke. The shock blast go through. But Bib takes a bit of damage. So does Yursan. Mr. Quest has taken a lot of damage as well. Ooh. And the battle lines, they're just throwing left and right between them. But here comes Yersun looking for the engage. Solar Flare is going to go out. Yersun will be the first one to fall in this fight. But Bip on the retreat with the Ragnarok. It's one member down for TSMA. Sword over the wall will not find a sleepy trouble bubble. Hanser still getting a lot of that chip damage with the boomerang. But inhibitor does finally fall. EGA are finally able to grab what they came for. It's the power of cleanse right there. Sure, you able to use that one and survive the onslaught of crowd control from Yursan. He did get hit by a nice bubble, and we're seeing the strength of Sword. Even though he's down very heavily in CS, all it takes is one bubble to really scare the members of Evil Geniuses. And here's where it does land. Throws it onto Shoryu here, and this signals the start of the play for Yursan. I really like oh. that he has the awareness to do this, but. He's just barely short of that play onto Shoryu. 
do find that it would be very difficult for him to actually continue that, because Shoryu did still have ult and flash, so he might have died regardless, but you can see TSM are still trying to find their avenues of success, and they're going to need to, because Evil Geniuses did take their inhibitor alongside that dragon. They're at soul point now. Yeah, soul point during that whole replay. Mountain Drake was picked up, so one more Drake to get to that point for EGA. Over the wall, Sword will find that sleep once again. Weaver's wall used by contracts. Here comes Jojo. He's going straight after Ooh. Sword. The headbutt pulverize comes in, and Ooh. Sword falls. Tony Top gets the kill, but it's a one for one trade. Running away once again will be Babip. Jojo getting closer and closer, looks for Hanser, dashes forward, tries to find the slice and dice as Tony Top going into the hammer form. There it is, finds the stun. Hanser is getting caught out. Here is the flank. Jojo goes deeper. He's getting higher and higher on that bar, and he smells blood in the water. Goes after Cody Sun. Cody Sun using the killer instinct, oh. but there is Shoryu to shut him down. And with only Hanser, with only Babip to defend the base, this is looking better and better by the moment by Evil Geniuses Academy. There are no minions here, so they cannot end the game quite yet. But Evil Geniuses find three incredible kills for themselves. The damage from Tony Top is gigantic. And now the Baron's going to be up in 45 oh. seconds. Hanser, oh, oh no! my god, Tony Top! Hanser, wrong fight to pick. Tony has your number. Hanser has a ton of armor. He has Ninja Tabby, or plated Steel Caps, excuse me. He has the Dead Man's Plate. But it's still not enough. The armor <laughs> penetration of the Eclipse and the Sorelda's Grudge is gigantic, and Tony Top makes such quick work of him. I'm so surprised right now. Hanser is the tank. You can't do that to him, Tony. You can't do that to him, Tony. Just outright destroyed the poor lad. Now sitting on the respawn is Evil Geniuses Academy as they keep finding these small advantages. It's leading them to the point where they're almost at the 10k lead. And with still a couple seconds left on Haunter's respawn timer and no teleport, this should be Evil Geniuses Academy's Baron. There's absolutely no way the TSM can get this one. They don't have Jinx. I checked. Trust me. There it is. Picked up by Tony Top again. It was 5-0-5 on the Jace. Making this pick work so, so well, not to mention JoJo, 604 on the Renekton. These AD laners paired up with Contraxis Talia are the reason why we got so excited to see this champion in the draft here for Evil Geniuses Academy. They are making it work. They are proving us right that we should get excited for these players. We should get excited for these picks. And we should expect the Evil Geniuses get to match point in this series against TSM Academy. Here comes Weaver's Wall coming in again to stop the defense that TSM want to do onto this tower. But look at JoJo in the mid lane. All oh. meanwhile, here comes Solar Flare going to come out. They're going straight after Contracts. Contracts will be able to get away, though. No, Babip catches them with an axe, but it's two going down. Evil Genius is able to find those kills. Push back in is JoJo, but JoJo wants Hanser, and so does the rest of the Evil Geniuses. It's going to be a double kill. JoJo flashes forward. Can't quite take down Sword, but instead, he's going to take down the base, and so is the rest of EGA as they march down in game number three, making this a 2-1 in favor of Enial Geniuses Academy. That's going to do it there, Deserux. Evil Geniuses making a huge comeback in this series. They lose game one so spectacularly. TSM really popping off, especially Babip on the Hecarim, but this game two, this game three have been all things EG. I love this composition for them so much. I love Talia. It's, it makes my heart so warm. Oh, I got so excited seeing Talia, but what I wasn't thinking about was like, once you put the rocks on the ground, there's so many members of TSM who just can't really get in without getting punished by that. I forget what the name of the move is. You, you, you'll update me on that one. But it was just, it was hard. <laughs> it was very hard for TSM, and Contracts just had their number. Starting off with that Talia, he didn't let down the momentum. And especially with JoJo and Tony, the, the leads Contracts was able to transfer into those lanes made them shine so much more as players. Like I said, this is why we get excited for comps like this, for Evil Geniuses. The AD threat of the top side and the mid lane here for JoJo and Tony is the reason why we get so thrilled to see them on red side. They have all these different draft pieces that they can put together and make these huge cohesive moments for them. And 
I also want to give a huge shout out to Shoryu after that game because <laughs> he was put on the back end so, so hard. He was bullied out so tremendously hard. He still was able to do so much in those team fights. He still was able to perform on the Zaya, even playing weak side. I think that's very admirable of him to do. He he put up with it. He put up with it and yeah. he came back. That was the main thing right there. But I want to focus on the top side. Tony Top versus Haunter. It's been a while since I've seen Haunter get dumpstered like that, but that's the presence contracts had on the map. It allowed Tony Top to just keep pressing his advantage, not even worrying about what Babip would bring. We saw that Tony Top was able to take down the entire turret with no jungle help, no Rift Herald, just in his isolated matchup. We even saw Sword make his way up there to try to stop it from happening. But Tony Top is inevitable in that top lane. He will take down that entire turret and he will, like you said, completely dunk on Hauntzer on his Gnar champion that he's performed so well on in this entire tournament. He just picked that Gnar and still it's not enough to stop Tony Top up there. So we're at game point now. Evil Genius is just one win away from making it into the top four. Will they be able to do it? We'll throw it over a short break. Analyst Desk will break down game number three of this series between Evil Genius's Academy versus Team Solo Mid Academy. We'll be right back. <laughs> 